the ocean was the birthplace of life on Earth. As far as we know, the life began in the oceans. If we're not careful, it could potentially end in the oceans as well. My name is Gabriel Jose Rodriguez Vázquez. You guys can call me Gabe. And I am from Mayaguez, Puerto Rico. I am currently a senior biology major, my concentration being in ecology and evolution. I initially got into this major because I knew I wanted to protect the ecosystems, not only here in Florida, but across the entire world. Everything from rainforests to wetlands to coastal ecosystems, all of them were very important to me. But moving along, getting scuba certified in Florida, getting into fishing and paddle boarding, a lot of those things uh, fueled my passion for marine science and the ocean. I realized, hey, the ocean's a really cool place. So I decided on, I want to go into fishery science after I get my degree. So one of the biggest problems facing many of the marine ecosystems around the world is going to be climate change. Climate change being the increase in, in the average temperature across the globe. We can expect sea levels to rise as a cause of this. Um, we can expect about eight feet, on average eight feet of rise by the end of the century and about one foot of sea level rise by in the 2030s. We can affect that amount of sea level rise. So pretty much any kind of coastal property whether it be beach houses, penthouses, any kind of docks or seaside businesses are all under threat because of sea, le uh, sea level rise. In addition to that, with increased temperatures, ocean acidification is expected to get worse, basically as the water warms up. Carbon dioxide mixes with the water and forms carbonic acid, which prevents a lot of the shelled organisms, such as your tasty mollusks, your crab, your corals, all of your hard shelled organisms. They're not gonna be able to form their hard carbonate shells and they will, their populations will decline, which could be the collapse of many food systems and food chains around the world, especially when people such as ourselves here in Florida, we love to eat oysters, clams, blue crabs, shrimp. A lot of us use shrimp for baits. A lot of these animals will have a harder time growing and there won't be as, as abundant as they need to be. In addition to that, sea temperature rise as well. A lot of organisms have a very narrow range of temperature tolerances, tolerances for sea temperature, including corals, corals being the biggest, biggest example, being in tropical areas, they cannot tolerate temperatures much hotter. So we can expect their populations to dwindle and maybe even their ranges expand because as sea temperature rises, what was once too cold for them is now just warm enough for them and they'll move gradually more northward. So the subtropical will become too hot and even the poles will get too warm for all those cold water species as well. So just an overall complete redistribution and reevaluation of the abundance of all the species of worldwide. My name is Alex. I'm originally from Fort Myers, Florida. I'm a senior and I'm a double major of marine biology and environmental science and policy. I want to work in research. I've always had a passion for the ocean since I was little, so I just know that I want a career that's out in the field somewhere. I've been diving since I was 15 and I'm almost 21 now, so almost five, six years of scuba diving. And I've been diving some of the same reefs since I was originally became a diver and you definitely can even tell in small areas of where color changes being present or just a lack of coral polyps growing. Um, you could tell that there's just a growing slow general negative impact happening. It's just really sad to see such a big change that will take so long to grow back and um, Coral polyps and coral communities specifically take hundreds of years to regrow and repopulate. Um, and so I feel like that's just really sad to see. Um, I think also that's a lot of what drives me um, towards the career I wanna do. I wanna um, learn more to educate people and help people understand what they're doing and the impact that human impacts are having on marine life. So. It definitely motivates me to want to work in the career and the path I want to go down, but it's really sad to see. The ocean makes up over 70% of the earth and in one way or another, we're impacting it and it's going to come back to impact us. There's so many different ecosystem services from fisheries and just um, the ocean in general tourism that impacts humans and all over the world. And so, um, that's definitely some ways in which humans can be negatively impacted. Also noting um, that even just in the U.S. alone, even in our state alone of Florida, um, areas like Miami, especially in little tiny islands like the Keys or like Sanibel Island, um, are all areas that are probably going to be underwater, including the city of Miami, as I just said 
within at least the next 50 years from ocean acidification and global warming, which will then lead to sea, sea level rise. I did an internship in the summer of 2023. I worked with freshwater fish. So although my, although my research particularly did not pertain to marine science while I was over there, I did get to explore and talk to a lot of scientists who are working with marine science over there in Puerto Rico. And I even got to go to a, a neat little place in Puerto Rico que se llama Playa Mar Chiquita or a little beach or a little ocean, I should say, because basically it's a little lagoon where the water comes in one way. There's a lot of really beautiful corals in that little small piece of water. But being such an isolated piece of water with not much mixing with the rest of the ocean, it warms up very, very quickly. So all the coral you do see is bleach and it's just replaced with a bunch of fire urchins, the very venomous ones. So being over there, I got to see firsthand that coral bleaching is an effect thing and it's affecting corals on a wide scale. I saw everything from brain coral dead over there. Um, I believe I saw elk corn over there as well, a lot of acropora, which is a genre of coral that is very common throughout the Caribbean and probably the Florida reef tract as well. So definitely firsthand in the Caribbean, a lot of dead corals. Probably, I want to say since I was six or seven, I grew up pretty much on Sanibel Island. I technically lived like a couple miles from the island, but that's where I grew up and that's where I learned my passion for loving the ocean at um, an ocean environmentally based summer camp. And then by 13, I started volunteering there and I've been working there. I just am recently not on payroll, but I've been working there and I've been going there since I was six. Grew up around the CEO and his wife. Um, and just really that's where I've learned to love the ocean and everything in it. So since I was little, and then we just pass and educate that on so many future generations as we can. Um, so I've been volunteering there for as many years as I can remember. I love it there. Um, and then more recently, I did about a year ago, just go on a six month trip to Townsville, Australia, which is in the top right Queensland area region of the country. And I studied abroad there for six months at a local research university that was there. So while I was scuba diving as much as I could and just being in the ocean as much as I can, I was also taking 13, 14 credits, um, all with labs. Um, while I was there, definitely a lot of hands-on research, mostly focused around coral reef research. Um, and one of my main research points that I was doing there was fish biology research and anatomy and um, things like that. I personally don't think that policymakers and governments in the U.S. particularly and in many other countries are really focusing in on marine conservation and conserving the aquatic ecosystems around them, whether that be marine, ocean, lakes, rivers, any body of water. Um, I feel like there needs to definitely be a bit more care and concern. And while we do have marine protected areas within the United States and conservancies and other protected areas across the globe, they make up just such a small percentage of the actual area that is used for fisheries, tourism, sightseeing, just on a day-to-day -day use. So um, I feel like definitely things like MPAs, marine protected areas, um, can be expanded. And um, definitely the idea of marine conservation is something that can be talked about more and definitely developed and built off of in the future for governments all around the world. Right, so it's a little bit of a complicated situation because a lot of environmental support, a lot of that um, backing and lobbying that goes into environmental policy really fluctuates with how well the economy is doing. So in economic prosperity, stock market's doing great, people aren't worrying about when the next meal's coming in, they're not worrying about paying rent or what their job is. People tend to care more about the environmental issues because they can care about it because they're not concerned about food, the, the basics, food, shelter, water, um, having a job paying rent, that's when those environmental issues really start to take root and really start to get the support that they need to get things going, get things rolling. When the economy starts to take a downturn, such as any some form of recession, stock market starts to crash a little bit, people start panicking, start worrying a little bit about, you know, where the next meal is going to come. That's when we start to lose a lot of that environmental, uh, environmental policy support just because they're not, their concern is not with, okay, how is the red-bellied woodpecker? Or how is the cow no stingray doing in the environment? They're concerned about where's my next meal gonna come in? How am I gonna pay rent this upcoming month? You know, 
So really, in, in to continue to have that support for environmental policy, it really comes down to either figuring out a way to people to continue to invest and care about the environment despite economic recessions and current standards, or um, making sure the economy never gets to a point where people start losing that support. There's definitely a lot of social media that's been taking place, a lot of informing the public, which is a really just good broad way to let people know of what's happening around them. And I know in Florida specifically, there's been a lot of coral restoration work happening down in the Keys, um, which has always been just a really positive thing. While it takes many, many years for coral restoration to take place, starting somewhere is always the best first step, so. There's a bunch of great organizations out there that really do care about marine ecosystems and the challenges that they face. Um, again, some of the most notable ones, there's a bunch of rehabilitation centers throughout the country all the way up in the one all the way up in Maine, the rehabilitation center up in New England. They do sea turtles up there. Here in Florida, we have a bunch of marine facilities like SeaWorld does sea turtle and manatee rehabilitation. Clearwater does sea turtle, manatee, and dolphin. Florida Aquarium does sea turtle. There's a bunch of coral restoration in incentives all over. So there's a lot of really good research out there that is being done to help combat a lot of the issues that are being faced. I feel very empowered, um, hoping to make a difference. I'm hoping over time it makes a difference, but I feel very motivated to work in this field towards the future. I want to make a change. I want to be a positive impact and a positive influence to people in the future that want to study marine organisms. Just always hope the only, the only time that we are truly defeated is when we give up. There's no point in having this sort of like doomy, gloomy attitude, like, oh, everything's ruined anyway, so why is the bother doing anything in the first place? But like, no, that's the exact attitude that's gonna keep us in the same place that we are. There is hope, there's a lot of great research being done around the world, not just here in the US, but in, like you said, Australia, in Latin America, over in Africa, everywhere. People around the world are realizing the importance that marine ecosystems have in terms of providing protein and food and reliable jobs to people living in coastal communities, which by the way, around half of the world lives within the coastal area, which is about 30 miles from the coast. Half of the population of the world lives within that coastal zone. So we are extremely dependent on the health and uh, health and reliability of these ecosystems and also resilience of these ecosystems. So, yeah. One thing, like one big happy message to wrap things up, um, is that no change is too small. Um, I know it sounds cheesy, but one step in the right direction makes a lot of steps in the right direction. Tell your neighbors, tell your friends, don't litter, don't use your shingle use plastics, reduce, reuse, recycle, um, all those things around you. If you're interested and wanna be educated, there's so many different ways to learn about things. Um, the internet is one special gift that we have in this generation, so. Definitely keeping yourself informed and um, looking out for the planet around you because we only have one of them. And if you want your grandkids and your great grandkids to appreciate and love the ocean as much as I do, I would suggest that you just look out for the world and the people around you.